Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and we've got a busy day ahead of us. We are continuing to work on phase two, adding fish tanks, so we've got to get uh, the wall in that's going to house four 20 longs and a couple of 29s. We've also got to move some fish tanks over, so stay tuned and we're going to... All right, everyone, so here we've got the second stand going in on the wall now. This stand is going to hold two 29s on the bottom, two 20 longs in the middle, and then two 20 longs up on top. So we've got the 55s that came out, and now we've got these six tanks that are going in. I have to build the wastewater system. It's going to be done a little bit differently over here compared to the 55s. On the 55s, I have this PVC coming out with a hole drilled in so that wastewater can go directly into there over here i don't i'm not comfortable with the amount of room that i have at the bottom of the stand to accomplish that same task and so what i'm going to do and you'll see this shortly is i'm going to run two pieces of pvc vertically in the back of the 29s they'll be shorter than the 29s so that we can still get water running even from the bottom level they will go into the wastewater system which will eventually travel down that wall so I'm going to attack the wastewater problem a little bit differently with this stand just because I don't have the height at the bottom of the stand like I do on these 55s. It'll still work just fine. Just going to be a little bit different for this section. All right, everyone. So things are moving along pretty well. We've got the rack in. The wastewater system is in for this 20 long and 29 rack. Still got a little bit of work to do. We still got the two tanks that are missing. That is because those two tanks are still set up in the rack in the corner over there. That's another 29 and another 20 long, which will go in those two empty spots, those two open spots that you see. So at this point, I've got the tanks on the stand. I've got some substrate in there. I've got the lights. What I need to do next is get all the filtration up and running. Then I can get the water in. I can't do that because I'm still missing some gang valves uh, that I need for this section. And once that's done, I will then move those two tanks over and that will be complete. That stand will be complete. Then the very last thing we need to do is over here where we've got that 29 and that 20 long, that's where the rack of 10 gallon tanks are going to go. So there will be nine 10 gallon tanks in that area in the corner. And then this wall will be complete and we will have added all of the tanks we need to add for phase three. So we're getting there. Next step, like, we, like I said before, is now we got to get these tanks looking good. Okay, everybody, so here's an update. The middle 20 is up. You'll have to excuse that sponge filter in the center. That's just there to keep it wet. But this 20 now has all the plants that were in the 29. Believe it or not, there are four Bolivian rams in there along with a large female albino bristlenose. So they're finally getting their own home in here and we used most of the water from that 29 to go in here as well as the sponge filter that was in that 29 just so we wouldn't have any ammonia or nitrate issues so essentially what this tank got what these fish experienced were about a 40 percent water change and then as you can hear probably we're emptying out a lot of the rest of the water in the 29 that's going down here so this tank essentially will be getting a 60% water change and we made sure to add some of the uh, mulm from the bottom of the 20, the old 29 over here into this tank. So again, very little chance that we have any ammonia or nitrite issues in this tank as well. Not even sure what's going to go in here. The fish that were in that 29 over there, besides the Bolivian rams, we had a couple of curvaceps cichlids that wound up. And this 75, sorry for the glare, uh, wound up in this 75. They'll do fine. Then there's some keyhole cichlids in there. They've been doing great. Uh, there was a night goby in that 29. And most of the time, people will say that night gobies are supposed to be in brackish water. Uh, we've been keeping ours in fresh water for a number of years. He's been great. But he's moved to the 20 gallon, planted 20 gallon upstairs. And that water is actually a little bit uh, harder than the water he was in. So he might prefer that even more. So next up, we've got to deal with the shell dwellers, the gold ocelotus, and that bottom 20 because that tank needs to go right there in the center. That 29 that we're emptying, as soon as we get most of the water out, will go down there. It's glowing Eli. He's got his little light set up so he can see inside that 20 long. 
and we've got some buckets over there because we want to keep that water. The problem is we couldn't do what we did last time because that 20 longs on the floor and it's going up here on the mid level. So he's getting the water in those buckets to kind of keep that for later. We're trying to empty that out enough so that we can get it up there. Ideally, I would like to not have to take the fish out of that tank. We'll see. We may have to. They may just run into shells anyway, which will make life a little bit more difficult. The 29 up there, we are painting the front. No, we're painting the back. Uh, and then that will go on the bottom. So things are moving along. We got this 29 all filled with water. So we don't know exactly, like I said, what's going in there. I still have to build the lids for this and pretty much all four of these tanks that we see here. So that'll be happening soon too. All right, everyone. So as I walk down to the basement, I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture up here of what we used to be looking at. We had the TV and the couple of fish tanks on that wall and then the 75 and the 50 or the 150. Uh, this is what it looks like when we walk downstairs now, at least at this point in the project. We've got the 150, the 275s, the 255s, and now we've got the 420 longs on top with the 229s. And what's coming up next in that dark corner over there, we'll have the 910 gallons. So this is what we're looking at now. Now, if we kind of move in a little bit, let me show you what we did. There's not a ton exciting to look at just yet. These 229s are empty. This 20 long, as I mentioned already, has the four Bolivian rams along with a large albino female bristlenose pleco. This tank now has our gold ocelotus. And they're a lot easier to see now. One of the unfortunate things was when they were stuck down in that lower corner, they were hard to look at and these are some of my favorite fish now i think in the fish room so pretty cool that they're going to be about eye level and then if we go up above we've got a couple of 20 longs that don't have anything in them just yet so we were able to add we gained four more tanks by doing what we did here today and those four tanks of course is the additional 29 and then we got the three extra 20 longs that is the old side of the fish room, which is now becoming, I guess, the new side with all the additions. So we can see here. So just got to get those tens in. All right, everyone. So there you have it. That was a decent amount of work, but it went really smooth. We got all the fish moved over. It gives us a little bit more capacity. We've got some babies all around the fish room that we need to start moving into other tanks. So those nine, 10 gallons are gonna become important for us here. And so that is our next plan is to work on that. Then we start working on phase three. And phase three is not adding more fish tanks. Phase three is going to be really making these tanks look a lot better. So we're gonna get some live plants in a lot of the tanks, do a lot more hardscaping. And that is going to take some time. We're gonna take that slow and really just take it one tank at a time. So if you like this video, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.